Um, and some, some of the hosts are collecting those taxes, uh, those uh, tourist taxes. I'm just wondering uh, whether, um, what are the chances of those taxes, tourist taxes getting to the city from the host? Like is it, like, like if, like in Berlin you were talking about getting the data, like, like how does the city know this place is an Airbnb and th those tourist taxes are going to the city? Uh, is it like, is it more legit or is it less legit or is it, anyways, that's my question. Hans, could you hand? Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Hans, I'm coming from uh, Transform Denmark. Uh, thank you very much for your contributions here. Uh, the discussion on Airbnb is uh, an important element in looking into how the rent of people in most of cities in Europe today is raising, and raising and raising. And these raises in uh, the rent is also a possibility for a political movement uh, within the people who are living in the cities. And in that sense, it's extremely important for us as European left and as transform. Uh, I think it could be very good to um, formalize more the exchange of the information uh, on uh, the work which is being done on Airbnb uh, in different places because it's difficult to, uh, to go behind and see what's happening. I would also say another thing, from my point of view, looking into Denmark, I think there are two issues related to this more urgent at this moment. The one is that you can find in most European cities, the vulture funds entering and buying and buying and buying like Blackstone. And I think it's, it's rather important for, for an organization like Transform to see how can we connect work on these issues in a number of different places. And the other issue in Denmark is uh, social housing and the, the confrontational attack on social housing complemented with uh, an offensive against the immigrants. We have a recent law in Denmark called the ghetto law, which uh, means that you have to uh, tear down a number of social housings in different places which are being defined as ghettos. So in general I, I would like to see more intents to gather works on these different issues related to the cities uh, at this moment. Thank you. I just want to um, yeah, answer the tourist tax question um, from you from Canada. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, you have uh, an um, unfair BNB Canada uh, association, which is quite active. Uh, that was uh, three years ago or something, the first counter action I uh, recognized. So Canada was as far as I understood, very early with uh, thinking about a critical um, understanding of Airbnb, not Canada in, in general, but there were groups in Canada organizing this counter movement. So um, the tourist tax uh, question is what I tried to mention with the, um, that, that it's a question of taxing. Uh, if you allow Airbnb to do what they want, you will lose a lot of taxes. And the tourist tax is the city tax in Berlin. It's called the city tax uh, that you have to pay if you go to a hotel, whatever, they will um, um, get it from you. So, um, but if not, if you go to a legal uh, uh, Airbnb place, you will probably not have to pay it because if you rent, the rent, um, the renter is not paying the tax, then of course it will not be there. So what is my answer to this problem, this specific tax problem? 
even I'm not a conservative asking for taxes. Yeah, this is this is also funny. We as a left are more and more speaking about the classical conservative <laughs> questions. So I'm I think I'm totally um, for me it's totally clear we have to put this question to the senator of finance. The minister of finance has to take care on those taxes. That's why I say all the things about the registration. I mean, Airbnb has a system that um, they mm, bring, want to bring to the cities. They say, okay, we have a registration system. Uh, everybody can register. The public authorities can uh, register the, um, the flats and then everybody has, who wants to rent uh, the house has a re registration number and then it all will be fine. Of course not, because of course, who wants to control? N nobody gets the data on the illegal ones and so on. So it's of course a big uh, cheese uh, with big <laughs> uh, holes. And um, that's why I'm saying let's connect the registration of the houses to the tax ID, which probably every European country has now, mm. uh, to the tax ID, and then let the Minister of Finance take care on the taxes. Because then you will easily take care of all the other things, the illegal ones and so on. So this is my personal idea but uh, our finance uh, senator is not very amused about my ideas, so let's uh, say this as well. <laughs> um, I mean, for Airbnb, um, not just Airbnb, but the, the platforms in Europe tend to say that they are ready to be helpful with the collection of, uh, of city taxes. I think, I'm not quite sure, but I think there is one example where Airbnb is actually collecting city, tax, uh, city taxes on behalf of their hosts. But ultimately what they're afraid of is that this will, that with the information about taxation, authorities will be able to trace back and identify who is renting out via Airbnb because the illegal, mar illegal market is enormous in many cities. Um, so it's not, I mean, to have to collect city taxes is not, uh, it's not their cup of tea. And it's not just about taxation. Uh, one of the things they're really scared of is that if they would have to have some kind of responsibility when it comes to the taxes that are uh, beyond the city tax because and I don't think at, at the moment there is only one example in Europe where Airbnb is now reporting to tax authorities what amounts have been earned via Airbnb that's and that's uh, incidentally that's Denmark normally they would not go into that territory because that's where typically where the big money is and that would that could potentially change their business the only reason why they accepted the um, settlement in Denmark was because the Minister of Finance offered them that um, if Airbnb was to be help would be helpful with taxation then the maximum number of days that people could rent out via Airbnb would be increased significantly so and I think that's kind of I mean that kind of that's a good image that's a good um, image about the uh, the weird power of this company yep. why why would the why would a government have to accept to give a concession mm -hmm. to a company for the company to be helpful with the collection of taxes and that's a, I think that's completely absurd. I'm really looking forward to see how this works in, in Denmark. One thing I have noticed is that Airbnb has made sure that with the money they hand over to the authorities, the authorities will not be able to uh, identify the number of days and the particular apartments that this money relates to. So there's no breakthrough there. Uh, I don't nope. have a...
any more I'm from Denmark as well. Um, uh, I think there's a few questions you should put onto uh, to your mind. First of all, there is a history that tourism is a, a, a kind of growth. That it's a big business. And maybe it's a bit big business, but it's not a big business for the municipality. It's a big business for somebody else. Uh, and I think that's the first uh, history or myth we have to question, is tourism so fantastic as we, as we are told? And, I mean, maybe tourism may grow, but I think the growth is for, uh, mostly in the CO2 and in the garbage. Uh, and that's things that the municipality and society has to take care, take care of, not those who make the money. The next the next thing is that um, Airbnb has really changed from being a, a, a couch surfing uh, like th thing like couch surfing with a bit of money, it has now changed into a big uh, cheap hotels. And it's obviously because I have, have, have been guests, big guests, I'm not on the list, but my, I have helped my daughter a few times, uh, very few times during the last maybe six, seven years. And the first guests were really guests. I mean, they were living in a home with me. They were polite and nice and took the things with, uh, how they were. The, the last guests, where is the key for the room? Where is the hair dryer? Where is, I mean, they were behaving like they were in a, in a hotel. And I haven't done it for two years now because I was so tired of But the first ones were really interested in the city and how we lived. And you could, if you were naive, you could actually look at it like it was, you know, a kind of exchange, a kind of sharing houses and uh, sharing economy. That sounds very good. But that is completely finished. That was years ago. But that was the way Airbnb sold the business. You share things with your neighbors and your friends and the whole world, blah, 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 blah. And everybody says, yeah, ha, what a nice idea. But that has completely changed. And I think we should not be naive and think of, or buy that history either. The other thing is that uh, uh, a lot of hostels, if you go in by Hostel World Comp, if you go in by Hostel World, if you go in by Booking Com, there's a lot of Airbnbs or flats which actually should have normal inhabitants uh, of the city now uh, is cancelled and uh, used for business. And a lot of the hostels are now uh, are all over the Europe are placed in, pl in, in houses where the former lived ordinary people. So the tourists are coming to see ordinary people, but they are pushed out all the ordinary people, so they have nothing to see. There are no shops, there's no beer, there's no nothing anymore uh, in, in the centres of the city. So they are, in a way, uh, spoiling the, the business they came with or the, the life they wanted to come and see. Uh, they chase that uh, uh, very much, actually. Go to Berlin, go to Copenhagen, go to, to London. It's all the same, same, same shops, the same business, the same restaurants, and yeah. And I think the tax paying is not going to the municipality or the state. Anyone? Um, I just wanted to add something uh, from the question before, because you was a were asking about what can cities do in a uh, maybe uh, as a yeah response and um, there is a cities coalition on um, the fear. Fearless Cities Coalition. There's different Cities Coalition as well. The Coalition on Cities uh, on Digital Rights. So uh, what happened the last years due to the municipality uh, municipalism as a new way of self-defense from uh, left-governed or kind of left social democratic uh, governed cities. 
uh, was to build those cities coalitions, um, uh, different ones, and one is like the on fearless cities. Uh, that is also um, yeah driven by activists as well. It's not only the uh, mayors sitting together with a cup of tea. It's also activists um, meeting and talking about how what what is the questions on uh, the cities have to work on. So uh, maybe this helps with the question of how to exchange uh, information and uh, um, furthermore, I would say uh, we in the European Left Party do not have uh, yet uh, a system of really um, bringing all those informations together. It all, it's always up to um, persons who are like in connection with each other. So, but this is uh, what's, what, is, what it was always. Uh, so I don't know uh, if we will change this um, really d to a different uh, situation, but I'm, I'm hoping. Um, to the Airbnb chain, Airbnb has changed. Uh, this is really important to tell because uh, the story Airbnb tells is the story what they were, what they used to be when they were like having a... Um, yeah, when they were living together, the founders of Airbnb, and um, um, giving the bed to uh, tourists and their bed to tourists, and uh, yeah, ex doing some exchange for a cheap amount of money. So, but this changed a lot. It's now an industry, as we can see. It has a lot to do with the wave of uh, real estate investment in the last years that um, has a lot to do with international uh, capital um, uh, invested in houses and buildings and I think Airbnb was a way to um, fi also finance um, second houses for people that's why in Berlin we decided to also forbid uh, to rent your second house because there are people who have different houses. You can have like a second house, what you have to tax with a second housing tax. But um, uh, furthermore, you can do what you, whatever you want generally. So now we said, okay, also for second houses, second flats, it is not allowed to do whatever you want. You can only uh, rent your second house for 90 days a year. Generally, I would say there should be the same rules for uh, second houses because um, people who has a second house uh, should need it for something. If not, they should not have it. You cannot just have a house because you have the money. That's what I think. But um, let's say this was not... Uh, uh, to be um, agreed on in, the, in our coalition. Mm. And I think the complete houses is a really important uh, indicator. I mean, if you look um, also what Tatiana told about Porto and Lisbon, you have to have a look at the houses uh, that are rented completely, not only the, uh, the one room uh, that is rented on uh, Airbnb. The, uh, the amount of houses that are rented um, at all, so the, the, the whole house or the, house, uh, the whole um, uh, flat the, that is rented is a good indicator for um, yeah, not um, for yeah, being a problem in this, uh, uh, in this uh, debate because of course the whole houses are needed for families who has no homes. So maybe this um, to add, and yeah, thank you. So, um, I, as moderator, <laughs> would like to ask two things, one for Kenneth and one for Stefania, and Catalina has already <laughs> talked so much, I, I will uh, spare her from, so for Kenneth, I would, well, and for everybody else, of course. But my question would be, is there any reasonable possibility that um, Europe, at the European level, 
uh, some sort of campaign aiming at that uh, Airbnb stops being considered as a service provider and being considered as what it is indeed a real estate agent. Is there a possibility to launch such a campaign? And, um, well, to be successful, it would have to be launched before. And this meaning, if this could happen, maybe it would be a step forward not only uh, regarding Airbnb, but possibly opening a door to launch similar campaigns regarding, for instance, Uber to be considered as a transport system uh, acting on the transport sector and so on and so forth. Could it be a strategy to not, uh, not regulate platform I don't like regulation, so mm. narrowing down platform capitalism to what it is. It's a business made in uh, uh, fine economic areas and they should be accounted for the economic areas they are operating and not just pretending to be something that exists online. Uh, this would be one question for Kenneth. The other one would be for, it's kind of a, a provocation. But <laughs> so, a a fair BNB is not yet available. Hopefully it will and it will work um, very nicely. But is uh, inside the team that is building this alternative platform, uh, is there also a concern to which extent this can be in a medium, longer future, overtaken, uh, not necessarily in the sense as uh, Airbnb started as really sharing a room and now it's, a, but is this a concern and which kind of uh, threats could they envision and try anticipate, so to speak, and try to protect the, the spirit of the thing? So, um, what is realistic um, in Brussels? What, what can we do to change the approach of the European institutions? Um, if you look at them in isolation, if you look at what the debate is about in the European Parliament, what the debate is about in the European Commission, you can only be, uh, become depressed and pessimistic. Uh, particularly the, the European Parliament. I mean, they've had one debate on Airbnb and they came out with a resolution. It had one paragraph and it read, we condemn the measures taken by cities to restrict the operation of Airbnb. Condemn. I mean, condemn is something you would say about um, um, gay cure therapy or poison, poison and atta attacks with chemical weapons and things like that. They used it against cities that, regu that were regulating um, Airbnb. So from, I mean, from that perspective, um, we should all go home and die and, and be depressed. But, but, I mean, this is something that to really touches the nerves of people's lives. And that is what we see reflected in the measures taken by city after city. And it has an impact. It has an impact when, a city, when cities like Berlin, Barcelona, Paris, Amsterdam and others address the European institutions and say, you're on the wrong track. You, ne you need to take another turn. Looking at, the, looking at the situation legally at the moment and politically in the EU institutions, it looks like it will be really an uphill battle. But there are, I mean, there is a movement at the moment that I think will have, it will have an impact in Brussels as well, because even Brussels cannot ignore that the housing market is being affected in a very, very negative manner by Airbnb. So that, I, I, I hope that's, um, does that answer your question? Because, I mean, at the moment, uh, those who make the decisions in the European Union are not on our side at all. But, but they, they are coming under more pressure. And you can, I can even feel it when I, I was uh, 